Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. I'm excited to welcome Justin Peck to the show. He's a pro racer and entrepreneur and author. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Your book is fascinating. It talks about a man who learned to rethink a life he wanted to end. Tell us about that. Wow, we're jumping right into right this. Right to it. Right to yeah. wow. mm -hmm. All right, so, um, geez, it was, it was a while ago. Um, a standard morning, woke up um, nice and early and leaned over and kissed my wife. I was married at the time and kissed my wife and woke up or uh, got up, took shower, went up and kissed the kids and said my goodbyes and went out back, picked up my dog, threw the dog in the back of the truck and we went out to do our normal tasks for the day. About 30 minutes later, I found myself driving up a canyon that I'd been to quite often and just to kind of unplug from everything. And I let the tailgate down in the truck and the dog's running around and she's having a great time. And I'm sitting in the truck sobbing, just mm -hmm. despair beyond despair. Like it was, mm -hmm. it, it was, it's kind of hard to explain. The people who, who've explained or who've exper who have experienced it understand it, but so, I'm watching her run around and I took a notebook out and just kind of started writing some thoughts and feelings down and in one brief irrational moment I reached into the center console of my glove box I grabbed my pistol I loaded it <clears throat> I loaded it and put it to my head and pulled the trigger hmm. so all I got out of the deal was a click right it just went that's it. And so I'm thinking like, how, <clears throat> how did you screw this one up? And so I mm. thought that I didn't load the gun. And so I rechambered the bullet. When I did that, the original bullet flipped up and landed in my lap. Wow. Whoa. And so I picked it up and I looked at it and you can see where the firing pin had hit the back of the bullet. Mm. So I have shot thousands of rounds through this pistol before. Yeah. And it's the only time it's ever misfired. So. so it was destiny. I guess. You were here. I, You're not going yeah, anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Wow. I, I, immediately wow. following that experience, what did you think and feel? Yeah, see, I, I, I knew that, I knew that yeah. question was coming. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's, it's kind of hard to explain. So it was the most incredible feeling I've ever felt in my life. It was amazing. And so what it did is it immediately took me out of this despair moment into this manic, like, yes, like, I'm gonna tackle the world. I've got everything. I had enough common sense behind me that I knew that that was gonna wear off. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm bombing down the canyon, when I got cell phone service, I'm on the phone with my doctor. It's like, hey, bro, like, this is what I just tried to do. And so he got me in and we sat down and we talked about, you know, kind of the things and I filled out the questionnaires and all the silly little things that they make you do. And we kind of came to this conclusion that, all right, man, like you are the poster boy for class one bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, rad, at least I have a name to it. How, I, how do you define bipolar disorder? Great question. Mm -hmm. Bipolar, wow. Actually, I, I don't think I've ever had anybody ask me that. How do I define that? Um, bipolar for me doesn't define who I am. It is who I am. Um, and it's made me who I've become in life, mm -hmm. but uh, it doesn't define me as a person. So I don't shake, shake someone's hand. I'm Justin Peck and I have bipolar disorder. I'm not that guy. So, um, uh, and in fairness, you know, mental health and mental illness is a spectrum. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Degrees. We all experience bipolar depression. Yes. Over the course of our lives. Yes. And so um, there's at some point where clinic clinicians say, this is an arbitrary line we're going to draw in the sand. This is where it's clinical, this is where it's not clinical. Yes. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along there is where you've got a line drawn right. in the sand for you. Yeah, hey, but see what's crazy about that whole thing is, is mm -hmm. who gets to determine what line, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, people look at me and they're like, all right, crazy thug guy with tattoos and mohawk drives race cars and stuff. Okay, we well, can kind of get why he might be a little goofy. But when you talk to me, I have a different, I'm not what you expect, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, which is, which is good. And so, um, go well, just a side note, I mean, I look at it very different. I look at it like you're such an advanced spiritual being and you're so powerful that you can make one 100%. direction go completely 100%. positive and then switch and go like this and That's have it right go there. totally spiral. I look at it like you're just a very, very 
intense manifester and it just goes extreme and people aren't used to that in a normal you know the masses are like oh let's just stay in the safety zone yes i look at it like it's a complete benefit if used correctly yes exactly so so that was kind of the purpose of the book i mean actually the first purpose of the book was to write it for my children the the concept of when you're eight nine ten years old and then you look at your parents and the struggles that the parents are going through, we don't know. Right? As, as children, we have right. no clue. So the idea was, I'm going to write this for my kids, and that's it. I had no intentions of publishing or anything. Wrote it for my kids so when they turned 40, they could say, all right, well, this is what dad was going through. Oh, I get it now. That makes sense. So I wrote it, and when I went through the editing process, the editor is like, nah, like, you have a message. Like, you, need to, you need to tell people. You need to... You need to teach people by your experience. And so that's kind of the path. That's, that's what I'm going for. Just love that, man. Yeah. Um, what would you say has been most helpful for you in digging yourself out of that hole, that <laughs> deep depression and dysphoria mm -hmm. that you're experiencing? So, wow. Um, the big misconception is, so I'm sitting here now, smile on my face, right? I, this is kind of the first tell-all thing. So the last two years have been really rough for me, two years. And so, and I didn't really even realize it until the first part of this year. So I have been in the depressive side of this disorder yeah, for a so. long time. Yeah. And so, but what's really crazy is I've, I've watched ever since January, reprogrammed, tried to reprogram. I was like, come on, JP, you've got to do this, man. So I reprogrammed and I can actually feel the manic starting to come on. Mm -hmm. I can feel the shift. Mm -hmm. And for the very first time in my life, I can feel it and I know what it is. And so I'm writing it and I'm documenting it. And so when I speak with people on a panel, with doctors, with people that have the medical side of it, now you guys get a benefit from the guy who lives mm -hmm. it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And man, I tell you, that it's a powerful team. Mm -hmm. It's something that can change the world. And I know that it's the statement that everybody says, but I'm telling you, I will be the guy. Yeah. I will so be that guy, man. So I was in a relationship with someone who was bipolar, and I'd watch him spiral, spiral in his manic, and I'd go, oh no, it's going to pop soon. Yeah. You can watch <laughs> it, you can see it coming, and it's really fascinating. There's this law of the universe where it has to come back to neutrality. So you go way out here, you got to come back mm -hmm. and stuff. So, how are you doing with I mean, some people recommend medication, some people are on AA, some people, whatever it is. What has been the primary things that have helped you really overcome this? Race yep. car. Race yeah. car. Race car. Oh, Go right. fast. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that's actually like my medication. So uh, there are a few things that I don't talk about. Um, politics, religion, and medication. Those are the things that I <laughs> don't we, talk yeah, about. We respect that. Yeah, for sure. like I Absolutely. Just, it, respect it. Because what ends up happening is it, you get off topic. We're talking about mental health. We're yeah. talking about race cars. We're talking about right. smiles. And I don't want to get clouded. But so. I think that's so important when you say race cars. You light up yeah. you're obviously deeply <laughs> passionate about yeah. the need for speed yeah what does that feel like for you oh my god it is so i do different i do a few different sports and um, the the one that is probably the most intense is uh, like the baja racing so we're in a full-size truck doing 150 to 160 miles an hour across four foot bumps and you're just blamming through these things your co-drivers trying to call out corners it's chaos the entire time mm. and it is the best feeling ever <laughs> oh. yeah. let, let me ask you a question and this might sound like a trick question because possibly it is yeah. yes yeah. um what are you thinking when you're experiencing these extreme sports what are you are you thinking anything at all yeah no mm. no that's see that's that's kind of the the 10 000 hour rule right i feel that i've been so i've been racing for Jeez, I think I'm going on 25 years now. And in that time, I mean, we've got over 80, 84 broken bones, 19 surgeries, wow. um, 12 plates, a couple hundred screws, cadaver parts. I've died oh. twice, um, 13 oh. concussions. I mean, Oof. amazing. I've done it all, right? So yeah. I've been there and done that. And so, yeah, it's been still fun. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, tell people where they can find the book, how they can follow your story, all Perfect. the above. Um, you can get the, the book on Amazon and then the website, justinpeck.com. Uh, and then all my social media is Justin Peck 49 and uh, yeah. Thank you that. for sharing Amazing. your story. It really Thank is a conversation so that will ignite a change in the mm, world. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you. Stay tuned. We'll be so back much. with more on Good Morning Thank La La Land. You.